Okay, here we are back at the Red Barn, and in this episode, we get to model the headers. I'm so excited about this. Here we go. So here we are in the engine bay, and the key design goal, as I mentioned, is to be able to drop the engine out of the car without taking the headers off. So what I needed to understand was how much room I have to build that model while being able to build that model with the engine outside the chassis. So what I did is I built a simple bracket contraption that bolts to the console, comes up and copies the dimension of the uh, rear plate of the suspension console, then copies the position in space of this support strut bar, and this is just holding it in place so it can be bolted to the engine cradle at the front. So this thing gets bolted to the engine cradle with the engine out, and I can model the headers knowing that if everything clears this thing, it'll work inside the car. That's for the room if, well, particularly if I'm trying to do an up exit, have the headers come out up above the engine cradle. But on the off chance that I find I either don't like that design or can't make it work, I also added or built this quick little bracket down here and know that I have a low exhaust exit that will work for me. But here we go. And then here's the, this is the low, the low exit. And then the upper exit is, you know, as long as it clears the things we know it needs to clear, we should be in good shape. So the uh, the modeling process will start next. And again, this is a, uh, an, I'm not trying to be efficient. I'm not trying to uh, get it one and done. I'm just trying to understand what my options are. Gave it my first attempt and ended up with this, which is actually an equal length set of headers, 21 inches long, which is the same length as the factory Ferrari header. So it was a good first try and it was just an attempt to see what it was like to work with this modeling kit. The issue is that the lowest of the tubes is way too close to the engine cradle, so this design won't work. But it was a great learning experience and it got me, it got me off to a good start. Because what's turning out to be difficult is getting this header high enough, low enough, it really is starting to be problematic with the angle this thing wants to sit at or must sit at and where it's going to go to clear everything as it drops out of, uh, you know, drops out of the chassis. Okay, so it's a couple hours later, and yes, I lied. I didn't film anything along the way. I didn't even take, well, I took a couple still pictures you can see here. Just a, the first attempt here was just to get things connected and get the measurements right. We're still targeting 21 inches, which is this, uh, the length of the factory Ferrari header. Uh, but I didn't like a couple of the things here. There's a couple of these odd bump ups where, again, this was just see where things fit and then start to refine from there. And now, after refining, we have this. And this is, again, same 21-inch length. And by the way, the collector, this collector dummy, you can see what goes on here is it just sits in there like this. Uh, it, it, very effective. I mean, this is really been super helpful this kit i could never have done this again that's just me i'm sure there are exhaust fabricators out there laughing saying you know i've done it for years with no kit i haven't uh what can i say so this has been super helpful and by simply counting the numbers of pieces as we've said all along these are 21 inch equal length headers i could not have done that without this kit anyway um you can see uh smoothed out a couple of the bumps Changed a couple of the radiuses. Uh, I think I'm pretty settled on the down and out exit versus the the up and out. You know, the view from the back of the car, you will see exhaust. It's not as dramatic as an up and out where you're seeing the bundle of snakes. So really happy with the Ice Engine Works header modeling kit. As I said, I could not have done this on my own with metal. It just would have been impossible for me. Not, I do not have that skill set. But uh, I'm thrilled. I am just thrilled with how that looks. Now it's time to do a quick inventory of the bends I need, and I'll get the uh, the stainless steel mandrel bent tubing on order. And so I am going to move the collector dummy forward a little bit uh, to give me more room back here. And as I regularly do, I'm lying in bed last night thinking, what else am I forgetting? 
And I realize another good reason for moving that forward is going to be I, I have to get an O2 sensor down here someplace. Going forward is going to be a good idea. And I figured I would just go ahead and record this whole thing and maybe you'll find this part interesting too as I try to work out reshaping some of these tubes. There you go. So that's the ice engine work kit. A little bit of, you know, watching how it's done. I hope that was interesting. And uh, next time it should be changing this out to steel and getting things tacked together. So here we go. All right, so after all that, no, I'm gonna start over again and move the collector backwards and I'll be able to get the O2 sensor back here where there isn't anything. I want the, you know, a lot more freedom anyway. And it's gonna be easier because those are starting, to, the tubes are starting to get pretty close to the front here. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think I can get, do a better job with everything moved back. So I think with just a couple more tweaks, I'm just going to do some final checks. And this is, you know, this is kind of a rough, a rough tape job. This end worked out okay. This one's not quite right. But as I said, I think when we move it into metal and we start making the adjustments that we can make with the, you know, slightly a bit more around a radius corner or slightly less around a radius corner, uh, that this design will work. And it clears. Uh, it clears, obviously, it clears the, the front pretty well. Well, it clears the front completely. We've got plenty of space at the alternator, and we got plenty of up and down movement here, because again, the motor is not gonna move side to side that much. It's gonna move up and down, and so we've got good clearance here. And as I said, when we get to it in metal, we can probably fine tune it uh, a little bit, just to be sure. And again, this might look close, but remember the bar is actually back here. So we're again, we're talking probably maybe a half inch of clearance between that farthest out tube and the suspension console support strut. And yeah, I like that. I like the fact that, you know, we kind of got the back two on top, the front two on the bottom. Every other cylinder is on the outside. Every other cylinder is on the inside. There's some cohesiveness to that design. At least that's my story. So there you go. And more to come. All right, in typical me fashion, yet another design. I reevaluated a couple things and realized that I wasn't happy with the clearance that was uh, happening at the front with the, the front cylinder and how close it was getting to this. So what I decided to do was abandon this clearance gauge, knowing that I really don't need those struts because they are largely redundant with the fact that the engine cradle is bolted to the firewall and it's bolted to the bottom of the suspension console. So I made the decision that I'm gonna model what I really want, and if I have to cut those struts out, then I'm gonna cut those struts out, and that seems to be what's gonna happen. <music> so a couple key design changes. Everything's got the same radius coming out of the head, which I think gives it a nice look. And the target now is that all four primaries are level in the same plane as they move uh, front to back, back to front. And then, if at all possible, and I can make some tweaks 
you know, you can see that there's opportunity to, you know, rotate slightly differently in the real world than I might be able to do with the, with the plastic. And that this plane across the front of the radiuses here will all be aligned. What's driving particular positions is, as I've mentioned, each piece of the header modeling kit is a predefined percentage of whichever radius you're talking about. And if I needed, let's say, gosh, just a third less of a two inch radius here and a third more of a two inch radius here, and that would clock a tube in a particular direction, I can't really model it to that level in the plastic, but I can do that in the real world. So again, this has been invaluable as a design tool because Again, I could never have gotten anything close to this knowing that these are all equal length. And by the way, this design is still equal length. Oh, one last thing about the Ice Engine Works kit. This looks like a complete hack job. And what's important to know is I cheaped out and bought, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I bought just a one side kit. And you saw earlier versions where everything looked like it modeled out in plastic, and it did. But this particular design has some long sections of straight. I mean, I've got like five inches of straight here. I got like six inches here. This is like 10, you know, so I used a ton of straight sections with this particular design. So blame me for this, not them. This has been a great, a great tool, just a great tool. So there we go. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. I appreciate the comments and questions. And those of you that are subscribing, those of you that aren't, come on, subscribe. Appreciate it. Talk to y'all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.